So tell me what you do remember about that era, the Great Depression. All right, I remember, you see, the Depression didn't start when I was born. I was born in 26, 28, had my operation on my throat and my lungs. And I can remember my father was the only one in our little poor neighborhood. At that time, we all lived in houses that had three rooms. Not three bedrooms. One room was a bedroom. One room was a living room, dining room all, and a little kitchen. And the bathroom was step outside in the winter and the snow. And remember to take the Sears and Roebuck catalog with you, because that was our toilet paper. And you didn't stay in the bathroom very long in the wintertime because it was cold. It was an outside john, that's what it was. I remember that much. Then I remember in 29, I would have been, what, three or four, I had a little brother that was born. And my dad, like I said, was the only neighbor, the only one in the neighborhood, that had a 29 Ford. But in order to drive it well, during that Depression time, he didn't want to lose his car, so he blocked it up took all the oil out of it, winterized it, and kept his car. And eventually, he got enough work that he could buy gasoline and put the tires back on it and drive it. The other thing I remember, very fortunate, that my dad was a multi, not millionaire, a multi-faceted person. He could do almost anything. There were three or four empty lots near our house. He, he would raise like corn and tomatoes and peas and half of it he would give away to the neighbors. The rest of it my mom would can with a pressure cooker. I don't even remember much about that. But I remember my dad would dig a hole in the ground, line it with straw, and then he would put the extra potatoes and turnips, parsnips, carrots, those kind of vegetables down in this storage place and put a wooden lid over it and some more straw and then the snow would cover it and would keep it all winter because we had no refrigeration, because we had no electricity. We didn't have a phone, no electricity. We didn't have water pumped in. Instead, we have to go out of the house and hand pump water from a deep well. The deep well was also our refrigerator. We would take milk or butter or whatever needed to be kept cold, put it in a bucket on a rope and suspend it down into the deep well to keep it cold. The good thing about the deep well was it was the most wonderful water to drink. Cold and tasted good. Not like some of these waters people today are drinking from bottles. I remember my father worked, I think it was called Works Progress Administration. And because he knew how to do so many things, he was kind of put in charge of uh, some of the things that were built. And I don't know whether Shauna remembers, but one summer up there, I took you to the park where he built the little house that had the pump in it. that ran water down the, you know, waterfall down to the river. He gradually was able to save enough money. And I think it was in 1936, 37, things were a little better. He saved enough that we could move across the street to another three-room house, but it had a basement. And we finally, because he was a plumber, we could have a bathroom in the basement. Believe me, that was better than going out in the ice and snow. From that, he took that little tiny house, and it's now one of the largest and best-built houses in the city of Mishawaka, Indiana. It's uh, sort of like a treasure to go there. But 
when things got better for everybody, they wanted to work. I remember they had a, I think this was all President Roosevelt. Um, I'm not sure which Roosevelt. It wasn't Teddy Roosevelt, it was his brother. But they started a program for young people called CCC, which went around to our whole country and really built up some of the nicest national parks and city parks and county parks in our country. It gave the young boys work, a little bit of money they earned. Most of them were supposed to send it home. And we gradually came out of that era. And as I look back, we did without electricity. We did without a telephone. We did without a lot of things, radios on all those things. Yet those things are more valuable than all of the cell phones and things we have today. Because that was personally your family. You were living together, you were helping each other, you were loving yourself and your neighbors. We had very few fights. It was pretty peaceful. Sometimes I find my today, my day today, saying, gosh, I'd love to go back to about 1938. Bad things were happening in the world at that time too, but I just remember much of it as being good. It was just good family time. Thank you.